This is my new tool post for the Martin Lathe. CA sized Loris copy. Come along and uh, let's see how we got here. Yeah, shipping companies have gone to shit. Um, certainly, along with the decline in the quality of their service, there's only been an increase in rates. So, let's see. Uh, pretty well packaged here. I love this stuff. Save all my packing material for when I'm shipping stuff, so I don't have to buy it. Oh my god, that's it. Yeah. This box is in noticeably better shape than the last one. Alright, if anybody's bought any of these import tool holders, the price is great. And for the most part, they are uh, very usable and very well made, especially for the money. But one thing that does suck about them are the factory hardware. The set screws specifically. Um, so if you can tell by the off-center hex um, and the slightly harder than Romano cheese uh, hardness um, the factory set screws that come on these are pretty much crap so first thing you do throw these out go to your friendly McMaster car and order you some replacements um, for their metric obviously and for these, this uh, size for CA, what you want is you want a 12 millimeter. This is a 12 millimeter um, extended dog point set screw, right? And this is a quality item, um, going to give you a lifetime of service. So first thing we do is change these out. And... Use the others for, I don't know. Maybe you could load them into a shotgun slug and send them to Toflater Mouse to let him shoot at watermelons. That would be maybe more useful than the way they are now. The rest of the hardware works pretty good. I mean, the height adjustment and everything on these uh, works pretty good. And, um, but the factory set screws will bail on you badly. 
and um, that's just a pain in the butt. Right? Doesn't do anybody any good. So change the set screws. And guys at Shars, if y'all are watching, you know, no shame in admitting where there's an issue. It's not like these didn't come with these, right? Um, you know, find a vendor and supply some of these and sell them as a replacement part because people will buy them. I mean, they're, they're about a, this size, about a buck a piece, so it cost me $4 to replace the set screws on a, what, $20 tool holder or something. So, you know, 20% price increase, but it's worth every penny. So this is my existing T-nut. And here's the one that came with the tool post. Uh, it feels a little wilder it would work, but as it is, um, if it's in here, one side of the T this is just not wide enough so I'm not going to use that um, this one here it fits quite nicely and the stud uh, in here is smaller in diameter than the stud that came with the Shars CA tool post so um, this I believe is a three-quarter and the uh, post that comes with the shards is a 22 millimeter um, it's a little oddly sized because it's 22 millimeter by 2 millimeter pitch which is extremely unusual so I don't even have that tap and, and that's saying something I've got a 22 millimeter by two and a half I've got a 22 millimeter by one I don't have a 22 millimeter by two so uh, anyway uh, this but this t-nut will work out uh, we're gonna figure out what to do with the mounting stud situation. So let's take this out. Here is the tool post in place. And the total distance from the tool post to the bottom of the T-slot is little over six inches so that's basically a six inch distance here right from the bottom of the t-slot all the way to the top of the tool post so accounting for uh not bottoming out the stud and having a little more uh, length here at the top um for a nut uh or a flange nut i need at least a say let's just say a seven and a half inch long stud uh, to uh, work with this tool post. So this is the material that we're going to make our mounting stud for the tool post. It's a piece of one inch diameter 1177 otherwise known as stress proof or fatigue proof depending on what marketing material you're reading. It's a uh, high strength low carbon steel machines like butter. We're going to be utilizing a 7 8 by 14 thread for our mounting post and uh, T-nut. And uh, so we've got to get down to diameter here to do a little single point threading. We're running about a thousand RPM here uh, using a Sitco WNMG insert. It's one of my favorite all around inserts. You notice the chips are coming off blue and hot get a nice little tight curl breaking nicely so this is a nice setup going to skim off uh, just a touch and then make a spring pass here down to our finished OD.
So this is the T-nut end of the stud. We're going to be turning about three quarters of an inch of thread here. So we're cutting a relief uh, at the end of the thread here. Again, this uh, 1177 just machines fabulous. Very free machining steel, very high strength material, 120K material, uh, great material for all sorts of projects. So we're going to do a little scratch pass here to make sure I got everything set up right. And you'll notice that I'm using the board and verse feature blade. I'm not disengaging the half notes during this running operation. So we're going to start our back and forth threading here. Again, I'm not disengaging half nuts. Uh, after watching this a little bit, uh, it's pretty clear to me that my threading tool is dull. Uh, you can see it uh, pushing back. Uh, the work is uh, pushing back on the threading tool. Not so definitely need to work on that. Doing the job, but he should certainly be doing the job better. Would you look at that? I dropped my marker. And would you look at that? I have got to clean up that pile of swarf behind the lathe. Not a good habit. But that's not what I really want you to look at. This is what I wanted you to look at. Look at that beauty.
beauty right there. Vintage Greenfield. Doesn't get much better than this. Love case hardening. Anyway, the nut was a little tight on that thread, so I grabbed the appropriate round die and this beautiful wrench and uh, just going to manually clean that up. Notice I placed a rag down on the ways to protect the ways and the wrench itself. And I'm uh, just going to run this over real quick. So we're going to uh, hit this little wire brush to be burned, clean that thread up, and check out our fit. So there's our finished thread for the T-nut end, 7 8 by 14 TPI, uh, threaded approximately 3 quarters of an inch in length to the relief groove. I'm going to do the other end in the same thread, uh, a little longer uh, thread on the other end. I'm not going to make you watch that. Before we can thread the other end though, we've got to carve this whole thing down to 7 8 OD end to end. That's the diameter of the thread and the diameter uh, through the tool post. So my first pass there was at a 40 thousandth depth of cut, and that's the chip I'm getting there. You see that stringy chip? Of course, it's hot blue. That's fine. This is a thousand RPM, um, but it's stringy and it's going all over the place. So I reduced my depth of cut to 30 thousandths, left the feed the same, and um, then I'm getting these tight little chips that are breaking. You know, an inch, inch and a half long, two inches long. Um, I'm running a feed of uh, 4.3 thou per rev. Um, when I started out there, I was running double that, 8.6, and I really had this sneaking suspicion I was about to cook, cook my insert. So we got a little more to take off here. And um, we will, uh, you'll also notice um, when I retracted in this last pass, there was very, it wasn't nearly as much peel on the way back because I wasn't flexing the workpiece as much um, and uh, taking a, a better cut. So we are gotta get this down to seven eighths and then thread the other end.
So it's over to the Alls Metal Drill Press to drill out the existing T-nut to 13 sixteenths, which is the tap size for a 7 eighths by 14 thread. All right, here are our parts. Um, this is the T-nut that was on the lathe. It was originally three quarters. I drilled it out and I tapped it in seven eighths by 14. Now, when you tap, let me show you this. When you tap your hole, get it started in there. Come on, get away. When you run your tap in for your seven eighths, for your uh, hole, do not run it all the way at the bottom. Okay, you do not want your stud to protrude from the bottom of your T-nut. Because what will happen is the stud will go through the bottom of the T-nut, it will press the T-nut into the top of your compound, and it will crack the top of your compound. So you don't want to do that. So what I did is I basically just ran this tap in through a couple of turns beyond flush and then that's still as sharp as a dog and then what this does by not tapping it all the way through is this will not come all the way through so it stops right there right so I'm not going to get in a situation where I run this stud through the bottom of the T-nut and damage my compound. Many a compound have been broken that way. So, there you go. Then we have uh, the nut that we're using for this. This is a, a master car part. It's got a captive rotating washer. Hard. It's a Tico product. Um, they call them, I believe they refer to them as... Um, Fixturing nuts. Anyway, uh, there we go. That is our uh, complete setup. We'll go stick it over on the lathe now. I'll have to uh, align that a little later. So there we go. I managed to source off of eBay this beautiful Williams 1 and 7 16 Super Wrench for a paltry sum of 19 something dollars which will be the dedicated wrench for this application. Um, I do not like affixed handles that some people put out here. I don't like them. I don't like them in the way. Um, so there we go. Anyway, uh, just to hold on. Locks up nice and tight with uh, really, uh, not much handle travel there. So smooth, tight. 
we'll have to do some testing on repeatability and, and this type of thing in the future. But it's going to get some use right now. So uh, there you go. New tool post um, from Shars for the Martin Lathe. All right, YouTube, there you go. New tool post, the Martin lathe, no more shimming. Turret lathe, tool post, gone. Um, full disclosure, while Shars does sponsor the Kilroy Measurement Challenge uh, at the bash every year, for which I'm grateful. Uh, this was not a sponsored video. I paid retail price for all of these items. Now, Furthermore, I'm not going to say prices right now because prices just don't age well on YouTube. I will give you part numbers, however. The set, which was the basis of uh, this uh, upgrade, is Char's part number 202-9477. That is the tool post, the uh, boring bar holder, the push knurl holder, the part off tool holder, a number two and a number one tool holder. So five tool holders and the tool post. That was the basis of this upgrade. Uh, then I purchased four additional number one holders. Those are Shars part number 202-9404. And then I purchased one additional boring bar holder, the larger one, the one they call the heavy duty boring bar holder. And that is part number 202-9417. Those are all Shars part numbers. That's where I got all of these parts. Um, the Upgraded set screws I got from McMaster Car, and the size that I got here was uh, 12 millimeter by 35 millimeter. And the part number, the McMaster Car part number for those is 404 346 7000. That gives you the um, uh, upgraded set screws. Of course, get the appropriate size for your, your, uh, your tool holder. The uh, fixture nut that I got, the large, um, the 7 8 by 14 fixture nut I got, it was also a master car part number. I will put the part number right down here. I will also provide links to all of these items down below in the description. Um, these are not affiliate links, these are just links. If you buy them, great. Doesn't affect me one way, shape, or form any, anyway. So, uh, a couple other things I got from Master Car that are kind of nice. Uh, they have these high visibility um, hex keys. They're anodized or bright blue. They're made um, in the USA. It doesn't have a vendor name on it. But I got a couple of these to go here because they fit these um, set screws and these tool posts. I will leave these on the lathe up there. Uh, you know, yeah, I have a hard enough time finding, finding stuff around the shop, so all the help I can get, right? Uh, anyway, that's it. A lot of stuff going on in the shop, a lot of renovations going on in and around the shop. So keeping me busy, uh, but look for more content soon. I always enjoy comments, so questions and discussion down below, let it rip. Be safe in the shop, and I'll be back with you soon. Thank you.